Hey Liverpool fans, have you seen the latest release? At Anfield Index, we've teamed up with Liverpool FC to announce that the brand new 24-25 LFC Nike home kit and anthem jacket are out now, and they're hotter than ever. The brand new kit pays homage to the legendary Rome 1984 side, featuring sleek pinstripe detailing that brings a touch of history to our modern game. Whether you're cheering from the cop or watching from home, you'll feel the spirit of the Reds coursing through every stitch. The best part? You can grab yours today. The new kit and training range are available in official stores, online and through the LFC store app. Don't wait, order now and be ready to show your Liverpool pride and style. Get your hands on the new 24-25 LFC home kit and anthem jacket today. Let's make this season unforgettable. You'll never walk alone. It's done. The goal of the year, part of the past. The celebrations, forgotten. The history, history. We're back to a blank slate. Clean ice. All that matters now is what happens next. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Eastern Conference Final begins Wednesday. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And welcome to another episode of Media Matters for Anfield Index. There's a sadness to this, isn't there, people? It feels like the end of an era. It feels like uncertainty of what's coming next. And there's a million things to talk about, about the man himself, Jurgen Klopp, will be the focus, a little bit of the Wolves game and everything else that's going on around Liverpool. And here to join me for for the final sort of post-match Media Matters as ever is the renowned and the respected David Lynch. It's... It's a weird one, this, isn't it, David? Just the way everyone feels and the way it is at the moment a little bit. Yeah, just end of an era, isn't it? And it sort of feels, yeah, so significant. And obviously, we usually just get into the the, the match itself when we talk through these on a Monday morning. But I just guess the, the tone of this one's going to be slightly different because it was just a, a really significant day in sort of Liverpool history. And, and, and for all those fans, who you know, not just there, but around the world, really, it's... Mm. Um, been a big part of all our lives, I suppose, and and yeah, just uh, it, uh, there's a, a happiness but a sadness as well because it was a, a, a great ride, but also yeah, sad that it's come to an end. Yeah, no doubts about it, and it makes sense to sort of talk about the the man himself, the whole atmosphere around it. I mean, we were both at the game yesterday. I mean, sort of before it, Anfield Road where I was, it was absolutely insane. There was human traffic, there was noise, there was flares, all sorts going off. The stadium before was loud, wasn't it? And then just almost t- throughout the game, towards the end, and even after the game, it was just a special atmosphere yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was great because I, I got to the game about three and a half hours before kickoff, so a little bit earlier than I usually would. But um, and it was just to 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 do some bits and bobs around, sort of what the atmosphere was like, and and see. And it was kind of mind blowing, really. I've, I've never seen it that busy so early, you know, ahead of the game. I mean, it helps that the weather was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, got to wear a t shirt in the ground, which never happens. Usually, nine months of freezing, so it was great. Um, and that, that I think, you know, but people were turning out early. I think because they wanted to soak up the day and the importance of it, and really celebrate Jurgen Klopp. So it was just an amazing atmosphere outside the ground. And as you say. 
then when the coach turns up and and obviously that that actually looked you know I I, I got a good vantage point for all that and that looked like a, a Champions League semi final it was so yeah. you know it was crazy really the the amount of people knocking about the flares were going off the smoke bombs um yeah amazing reception for for Jurgen and the team and then that just continued into the ground didn't it you know it, all the songs getting run through in the build up to the game um you know from about five minutes before kickoff Jurgen's song going on repeat. So so loud, you know. It's, it's turned to Matt Ladson who sat next to me and sort of said, "You know, I can't I can't believe how loud it is for what is essentially a dead rubber." Um, and I thought the atmosphere throughout the game was was fantastic as well. It was just, it really was a party atmosphere. And I think it was kind of, you know, it's, it's obviously not great that, that Liverpool went in title contention, but it's almost great that that was taken out of it, especially that they weren't maybe in Arsenal's position where it was going to get deflated yeah. in any way. It was kind of nice to just be completely out of that because the whole focus then was on sort of, you know, this is all about sending J- Jürgen off. And, and it was, yeah, it, it was really sort of special and, and nothing could take the shine off it. And obviously to win the game was really nice as well. So, yeah, it's just a, a day that I think, you know, I think will live long in the memory because it really was a special atmosphere, very, you know, very unusual. It was not like other special atmospheres I've seen at Anfield. Yeah. It was um, it was really, you know, celebratory and, and to send off a legendary manager. And yeah, one, one I won't forget in a hurry. Yeah, there was there was something just unique about the whole thing yesterday. And I mean, it was special. Everyone got a send off, didn't they? All the, the staff, the players and the manager himself. They always seem to set the right tone of a pull when they do these things, didn't they? Jurgen Klopp is obviously there, the leader, but the club got it right yesterday. It's important to say, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I sometimes think that the people looking from the outside and, and obviously rival supporters will, will love to sort of put anything down about Liverpool and look from the outside and think, you know, it's a little bit mawkish or a bit over the top. But I said this in my YouTube video or an approximation of this is that, you know, I think all football clubs are special in their own way. I think every fan, when they yeah. think that, is actually right. And they think, but the thing that's special about Liverpool and why fans are right about Liverpool being special is that, you know, it's just an unapologetically sentimental football club and and that shines through in everything it does. And that is true of, you know, well, well every, literally everything, but also, you know, when you get a significant moment like this, they absolutely mark it and, and milk it even and, and, and you know, make yeah. a big song and dance about it because it's all, I think Liverpool, as much as any club in the world, really appreciates that it's all about the relationships and the emotion. And I think that's something Jürgen absolutely got. That's why the bond is so strong is he knows what football is about. You know, yes, it's about trophies and winning, and he did his fair share of that. But it's about everything else that comes with it—the human side of it, the, the 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 personal relationships as well. And for Liverpool to mark those in the way they did, I thought, you know, that 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 just sums the club up really. And I thought it was just really, you know, spot on. I think they possibly could have reeled through the uh, the, the the backroom staff a little bit quicker than yeah. they maybe did. Yeah. One criticism, but no, I'm I'm being a little bit harsh there and and and, and I thought yeah it's, it it you know Jurgen would have very much wanted everyone to get their moment uh, in the spotlight because that's that's what he's like as a man and and everybody did do that and yeah he just added to that that sort of special atmosphere that we saw yeah even the fist pumps from the whole staff were brilliant at the end as well as Jurgen's unique ones and it should be said as well George Sefton did an incredible job with his playlist all the way through, even before, and Peter McDowell nailed it as ever. So uh, it's, it's the people around Liverpool that don't always get the shout that should as well. And by the way, if the marketing team have got any sense for when it gets released, because by the way, I don't even know if there's any point in doing the official announcement, but surely, surely they use Jurgen Klopp doing the chant about Arnie Slot in the announcement. Surely that makes yeah, sense. You'd make Arne Slot the, uh, the front runner for the job at the moment, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'd, I'd say that much. It's, um, yeah, I mean, again, just just Jürgen's class summed up in a moment that really, in in terms of, he's obviously thought about that before and, and yeah. kind of thinking in a day that was all about him and saying goodbye to him and thinking about the memories he's made at Liverpool, he's still thinking, how can I set the next guy up? How can I make life easier for him? How can I make sure the fans are straight on side with him? Uh, just, just absolutely brilliant. And again, you know, the idea that he's coming up with football songs again—he gets that human side. He gets what it is to be a supporter. You know, you know, he just loved football as a fan. If he wasn't a football manager, a world-class football manager, so yeah, to to do that is just uh, just fantastic, really. And I'm sure Slot would have had a smile when he when he heard and saw that clip. It's just a um, perfect way to to pass the baton, and uh, yeah, just as I say, sums Jurgen up that really. Yeah, class act all round. I mean, 
I have not really seen many clips released from this. I've seen the clips of the the party and there's Jürgen dancing on stage with John Barnes and everything like that. You were obviously at the the sort of the post match press conference when he sat down. Was there anything that sort of stood out for you or like cause there's not many clips come out from it? It must have been quite a unique experience even just being in the room for that. Yeah, it was quite brief to be honest. And I think you know you're going to done so many interviews at that point. I mean, it's it that's that's true usually in terms of you know he has to do six or seven um, broadcaster interviews, but these ones will have been longer, more emotionally yeah. draining because of the subject matter. Um, and so by the time he got to us, really, he, sat, he looked kind of wiped out, to be honest. And yeah, just a, a few questions, obviously, some brilliant quotes in there, sort of in terms of him yeah. saying, you know, that I love you all, but it's time for me to go. I thought it was a really nice line. And but yeah, he, he he looked he looked wiped out, and he looked like he was ready to sort of just let off some steam, maybe have a couple of beers, which it looks like he he did later on. Uh, but he got you know got a little round of applause as well before he left because I think everybody in that room recognised. You know what? What a contribution he's made, not just to to Liverpool, because you know not everybody in that room is a Liverpool supporter, but to to English football in general and what a character he's been and what he's added to to yeah. to the sport, really. So yeah, he got a deserved round of applause. He left, and and yeah, as I say, he did he did look a little bit tired, but it, it looks like he got a bit of spring in his step later in the night. So so happy to see that. Hello there. Have you ever found yourself getting ready to watch the Liverpool match? You've got your mates round, you've got your drinks, you've got your snacks. You're all set to go. It's going to be a good day. And then you find out, oh, the game's not actually being broadcast in your region. There's the heartbreak. There's rage. There's despair. There's fury. You're upset. You're looking for a solution. Well, we've teamed up with NordVPN to bring you a game-changing solution. That's right. With NordVPN, you can switch your virtual location to a country where the game's on live. It's like having a global ticket to sports, TV shows, and movies from all around the world. And here's the best part. If you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Anfield Index, you'll score the best discount on your NordVPN plan. Plus, our link gives you four extra months free on the two-year plan. And that's what we call a winning streak. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking, what if it's not for me? What if I don't like it? What if I'm not getting the use of it? Don't worry about it. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's totally risk-free. I've been using NordVPN to catch all the Liverpool matches and TV shows that I'd normally miss out on. It's totally transformed both my weekends and my TV watching. And not only that, not only does it give me access to stuff from all around the world with the click of a button, it keeps all my data safe. It means that the miscreants, the 'er ne'er-do-wells, what my grandmother would have called scallywags, who lurk on the internet to try and steal your information, can't get your information. NordVPN keeps it safe for you. So don't let geo restrictions bench you this season. Visit nordvpn.com forward slash Anfield Index and make sure that you're in the game, no matter when or where it's being played. Remember, it's not just sports. It's your all-access pass to binge-worthy TV shows and blockbuster movies from all around the globe. NordVPN literally unlocks the world for you and keeps you safe from the world. So don't miss out. Head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Anfield Index let the fun and games begin. Yeah, it, did, it would have been a hell of a day. And hopefully it's a hell of a hangover this morning as well. Well earned. I mean, for yourself as well, speaking of long days, because you're there three and a half hours before. And I saw that photo on your Twitter. Obviously, it's, it's a brilliant one with the sun setting. Was that to sort of meet print deadline? Or was that just to sort of soak it all up and almost feel like this is the end of the season, the end of an era? No, it's, it's obviously for me. I work in uh, for websites when I do match stuff, so so no sort of deadlines on, on on print stuff or anything like that. It was just kind of for me. It was just I I just had an awful lot to do, you know. Um, obviously, yeah. we do the the post match press conference. Um, I had to file I file my player ratings on full time, then do sort of a post match feature as well, which I had to knock together. Then it's video for YouTube, try and get that knocked yeah. into shape as well. So. And then obviously mix zone as well. So we had a little chat with Virgil, which will be coming out in a couple of hours. So you'll see that. So um, yeah, so could just a, an awful lot to do, and that was you know particularly busy match day in comparison to usual because 
there was so much around it, so much social media content to pick up, yeah. so many different things to to do. So yeah, it was uh, we were there a little bit longer, and obviously, usually Liverpool a bit like trying to kick us out the door really as as soon as they can to to get let everybody get home, which is absolutely fair enough. But there was no no signs of that yesterday. I think because it was such a big one, such big occasion, they knew that there was a lot to to write about and a lot to get done. And so that's why I was there when the, the sun was basically setting. So it was a, yeah, very, very, uh, very, very long day. Yeah. And I, I imagine it's probably a dream for quotes on a day like that as well, an article. So yeah, it's natural. And I suppose at one point we should really talk about the game a little bit, shouldn't we? In all honesty, there was a game unless people forgot yesterday, a 2-0 victory against Wolves. I mean, it, I know it's difficult to analyse in context of everything, but what did you make of the overall performance yesterday? Yeah, really, really good, to be honest, particularly because of the circumstances. I think it was so easy to get caught up in the the sort of emotion of the day and, and, and there was no real signs of that. I just thought Liverpool put on a really professional performance, didn't they, and, and, and ran out absolutely deserved winners. He, you know, seemed fully in control. Really, they were. They were. You know, Wolves were putting a lot of men behind the ball, but they seemed to to find ways of picking that apart and did really well. Obviously, the red card is a massively yeah. helpful moment, but I thought Liverpool were playing well before that and were, were kind of the dominant force in the game. So, thought they were doing really, really well. And and I think it's it's nice to to sign off with a win as well. I think all the players yeah. showed they've got ultimate respect for Jurgen in that they wanted to park the emotion and put a good performance on and they, they, they definitely did that. And then I think Jed Jed had a, a stat, didn't he, that was that that Jurgen Klopp's the first Liverpool manager since nineteen twenty eight, Matt McQueen, to to win his final game as Liverpool manager, which is a remarkable wow. statistic. It's absolute madness, really. So I mean I suppose you'd say that when when managers have the final game they tend to get sacked. So that's part of the reason. Yeah. But still incredible really that Jurgen got to sign off in that way. And it's not happened very often in Liverpool history. So yeah, credits to the players really for for putting all all the nonsense around it. When I say nonsense, I say all the emotion and all mm-hmm. the Ferrari around the game to to one side and, and putting in a performance like that because that, that can't have been easy. No, not at all. You think like the, the way he signed off at Mainz, Dortmund, and now us, yeah, there's always a, a way to finish, isn't there? And it, again, it's difficult to sort of set context, but was there a man of the match? Any real standouts for you at all? Yeah, I, I really like McAllister's performance. I mean, I was quite critical of him after the Villa game in terms of I felt yeah. they kind of had a hand in, in three, three of the goals that Liverpool conceded, really, but... Uh, I thought he was absolutely back to his best on Sunday. He looked, you know, really in control of the game. He 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 gets a goal that he takes really well. Um, he, I just thought he was all over Liverpool's attack and play. Won his battles in the middle, draws the red card as well. So yeah. really, really enjoyed his performance. And I was a bit worried that oh, he's, he's ending the se- season looking tired, and and he, now he's got to go to the Copper America. But he looked in pretty good nick. And I think probably having three weeks, three clear weeks in the build up to these yeah. three games, I, I guess. Although he didn't look great at Villa towards the end of the game, um, I think that's probably been helpful in terms of it's just offered a little bit of rest to him, and so hopefully he can, you know, bounce into that tournament in the summer. Maybe get a nice little break at the end of it. That would be quite good if they can give him some time. They can afford that, um, and then hopefully see a little bit more from him next season because I think it's been really promising first season. But I think there's I think there's more to come. I think there's more yeah. good moments to come because I think he can be slightly more consistent. So. Yeah, looking forward to to seeing what's come from him. Yeah, it did feel like in the last few weeks, it's almost the fatigue's caught up with him and it's fell off a cliff. He, he almost needed yesterday to get back on the horse, as it were. And the winner of the Golden Samba as well, which was an interesting pick as well. So, yeah, well-deserved. And one player that, that we should talk about starts again, another assist. It's becoming a bit of a familiar routine, this from Harvey Elliott. He probably doesn't want the season to end, if anything. Yeah, I, I, I spot on, really. I, he's really, really finished strongly, hasn't he? And, I mean, he c- completely deservedly has pushed Sobersly out of that sort of right-sided eight role. I mean, you know, big, big decision for the manager to make around that. What does he kind of like in that position? I think he's going to have a lot of time for Harvey Elliott. And I think this has just been such a massive season for him. He's learned so much. He's come on. He's, he's emerged as sort of one of Liverpool's most important players towards the end. So, you know, you, you, you hope he can sort of, Keep that, keep that going, and, yeah. and ride the crest of that wave, bounce into next season, and, and keep this level of performance up. And uh, you know, you should have expectations that that will happen as well, because he's a young player who's just continually improved and improved and improved. And I think now he's set this high bar. I think he can stay there because I think he's got all the quality to do it. And yeah, a, a, another one, sort of really excited to see what what's to come from him under the new manager, how he gets used as well. Yeah, 
Um, it's yeah, looking forward to seeing that. There's probably a couple of questions, and people won't want to ask this in a way, but because he's done so well at the end of the season, it's almost a double part question for this. Do you think? Hello, I'm here to annoy you. I'm here to annoy you into listening to more of me and more of others on EPL Index. We don't just have the Anfield Index stuff. We've got EPL Index as well, which covers the entirety of the Premier League. And we have three podcasts and a whole bunch of really good writing on EPLindex.com. The podcasts are my own two-footed podcast, which is every day at 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, covering the whole league. We have a Tad Predictable hosted by Tadiwa. You know Tadiwa, he does Anfield Index. He presents a Tad Predictable before every Premier League match week. And then Kevin DeVries and his crew on the EPL Roundtable there every week after the Premier League match week. So make sure you listen to everything we're doing on EPL Index and follow us there on Twitter at EPL Index. Thank you. Bye-bye. Gareth Southgate will take him. And would you take him if you were Gareth Southgate as well? It's, absolutely. I mean, especially because they've they've padded out the squad, haven't they, in terms of it, it can yeah. be bigger now as it did a 26-man squad. So yeah, I just can't see how we justify not taking him. I think, you know, ultimately Elliot's one of those players as well who's shown time and time again how good a sub he is. If England need a goal late in a game, and you need someone to use the ball, you know, because England in a lot of these games will come up against sides who don't want the ball as much as them. Yeah. And so to have someone who can find gaps, can just pass it around and, and, and pick up little uh, bits of space in between people, uh, in between the opposition formation, I just don't think he could make the case that you know, he has to be in there for me. And for me, he's had a far better season, for example, than Mainu, who, who looks like he's nailed on to go. So, you know, the fact there's three extra spots in that squad, I, I think Harvey Elliott absolutely has to go. Um, and obviously, you know whether that benefits uh, Liverpool or not. I'm yeah. not sure, but it, you know he can he can do wonders for his confidence in terms of you know being established in that England squad, the senior England squad. He obviously wants to play for England as well. So, you know, uh, and I'm not sure he's going to be a nailed on starter in every game. So, I'm not too concerned about him playing too much football or anything like that. So, I think I, th- I think it could be really good for him and and, and provide that that sort of much needed, not much needed, but you know, provide that little extra confidence boost that he is an established international top-class player. He can go into next season and expect to be starting regularly for Liverpool. So, yeah, I, I think he'd be good for him and I think he absolutely deserves to be there. So I, so I hope he is. Yeah, he will be interesting. It, it, knowing the way sometimes English squads are picked, it would not surprise me if he's not in there, to be honest. And yeah, I don't think there'd be too many Liverpool fans upset about that, but we'll have to see. And I suppose there's another youngster that's, Again, doesn't want the season to end. Jarrell Quanza starts, has another good performance and actually started to get on the score sheet on a regular basis a little bit as well. Won't want the season to end either, will he? Yeah, maybe going to start start him up front next season if he keeps this <laughs> up. He's been, uh, yeah, prolific. I, I think, um, yeah, the, the fact he's added that to his game and he's already got everything else down is is really, really encouraging. I mean, I thought, you know, on the defensive side of things, a really another really good performance from him yesterday. I don't think Wolves got much of a sniff, did they? And he's so composed in possession he's just got sort of everything you need to be a top center half and again you know big decision around Canate and him next season who starts the season alongside Van Dijk it's going to be sort of really fascinating to see how Slot sees that because Klopp has made clear hasn't he in these last three games that his decision on that is that Jarrell Quanta is, is playing better than than Canate he's offering more to the team and you know, maybe Slot will go with that as well. But it's, uh, yeah, it, and, and, and to say that, by the way, when you think where Quant has come from and, and what we thought of him and, you know, obviously had a good pre-season, didn't he? I think he looked really, really yeah. encouraging then, but didn't think he'd be anywhere near doing this. And and it's just a remarkable season for him. And he's, you know, he's going to be an established part of this first team squad next season and he deserves it for everything he's done. He's been an absolute revelation and, uh, yeah, full, full credit to him. Yeah, the two youngsters are, are really... Sean, in a in a not the best ending, but the way everything's worked out, they have been pretty special. And it's probably harsh to say concerns that'd be too strong. But did you feel with the forwards yesterday was a little bit of the story of the season? The way at times Gakpo, Diaz, and Salah just contrived to not put the ball in the net in different circumstances. Is that a sum up of the season almost at times? 
Yeah, it, it has been a little bit of a, of a story this season, has it? Even when things were going really well for Liverpool, the, the wastefulness was still there. It was just a question of, you know, can they just keep riding this wave? Can they just, you know, get away with it almost? And, and, and maybe in games where they miss five or six big chances, just get the one that get, wins them the game anyway. And so that is, it is a little bit of a concern. I think it's something Liverpool need to address. I, you know, am, am kind of vocal now about the idea that, that Liverpool need to sign a forward going into next season, whether there's a departure or not, really, I think, because I just think they need to rebalance the, the, the forward option slightly and just have one more killer about one more who puts it in the back of the net consistently, particularly because, you know, Salah's maybe coming to the end of his contract, Jota, is injury problems constantly. So they, they need another killer for me. Um, that that absolutely has to be a priority going into this summer. And I think if you do just tip that balance and add one more, I think it I think it just changes things in Liverpool's favour massively. I think it does, you know, it's not about, oh, we've got to sell two and, and have two. It's not that. It's just just a slight tweak that will it will give you, you know, it'll weight it more towards finishers than than creators. And I think that will really help Liverpool. And I saw a really good tweet from Dan Kennett, was it about that Liverpool have three of the top 10 for underperforming yeah. XG in, in the Premier League yeah. this season. I think, again, just tip that balance slightly. Just have another finisher in there who maybe overperforms XG and, and all of a sudden things look a little better. And I think there's no probably better summary of of what it's been like this season than the, the one... I thought Diaz was, was brilliant yesterday in terms of... I think he just ran walls ragged with his dribbling. He was, he was so creative and obviously his, his defensive work is great as well. But then he misses that chance from about four yards where he yeah. hits the underside of the bar. Like, how is he missing that? So, like I say, you know, the, no matter what happens with ingoings or uh, incomings or outgoings or in terms of, you know, Diaz, the question marks and all, all that around, you know, whether someone will come in for him. I just think Liverpool just need to add another forward who puts the ball in the back of the net consistently. And I think things will will look a lot healthier for them next season in terms of, you know, just maybe wasting a a, a, a you know, wasting fewer chances and being a bit more deadly. And that will, I think, improve the, the amount of points they're able to put on the board. Yeah, definitely not a creativity issue. Yeah, that that miss. I think we were all in the stadium stunned at how it stayed out. or But we almost expected it in a weirdest way at the same time. And even that one where Zabozla is three on one and he's got Nunes left, Salah right, and they still contrive to just make a mess of it, really, and not get a shot off, probably. Yeah, the, the story of the season. So we'll see how it's balanced in the summer. And... The red card, I mean, 25 minutes, a lot of people will say spoiled it. It, it is a red card, though, isn't it? It's over the top, as they'd say. It's the ankle. Uh, McAllister gets a lot of these, it seems, but it's a red card, isn't it? Simple as that. Yeah, first watch, I kind of thought he'd stamped on his foot, so I didn't think it was going to be, you know, I thought yellow card was the right decision, but then you watch the VAR clip back and he clearly sort of is quite high up on the ankle, isn't it? So it's a, you know, 100%. Once once you saw the replay, I thought nailed on red card. So they got that one absolutely spot on. And, you know, again, we, we should focus on this. The, these are moments that VAR is for. That's that's a great example of it working quite well. It was, you know, the referee was allowed to have another look and he made the correct decision. So uh, apparently Gary O'Neill wasn't happy with it, which I find fascinating. But, you know, yeah. I think Wolves have had some stinkers this season, don't get me wrong, yeah. but... That was absolutely the right decision. Can't have any complaints around that, in my uh, my opinion. And yeah, you, you're right that McAllister seems to get a few of those. It's, he seems to be seems to get caught with a bad one in every game. But it's uh, he's got quick feet, hasn't he? And, and Tomato, he was too quick for him. And yeah, absolutely a nailed on red and a, a good use of VAR in a season that's not always had good uses of VAR. It is an interesting one because because you're right. I mean, I, I don't understand why Gary O'Neill was complaining about it at all. However. You've got to give Gary O'Neill the mitigation that Wolves have been horrendously done to at times by VAR. There's no two ways about it. And probably it's understandable for me in the sense of why they're tabling this motion, that you can provide a body of evidence and go, OK, I can get why they're doing it, whether you agree with it or not. So there is that motion set to come before the Premier League. That was the big general story of the week that clubs will vote. Do we keep VAR? Do we take it away? What are, I mean, Jurgen Klopp's spoken about it as well. What are your honest thoughts on this? Because I know we talked about refs, VAR, especially PGOMOL, a lot this season. Yeah, I, th- I think there's absolutely no chance it, it passes. Um, I, I don't see Premier League clubs thinking that, you know, because there's just no way that the clubs will vote. You know, the genie's out the bottle now. I just don't think that you can put it back in. And um, so I, I don't expect it to pass because no, everyone will fear that. 
you know, yes, you can have some horrible VAR decisions, but the, the fear that they'll find themselves on the wrong side of a sort of obvious yeah. offside or, or or clear foul in the build up to an important goal. So I don't I don't think it, there's any chance of it passing. Yeah, you know, I, I hope, I'm, I'm I'm pretty certain. I, I you know I, I would happily scrap it personally, and and I, I kind of wish it had never come in, but I, I don't expect that that's going to be the case. Um, and I, I don't I didn't really agree with Jurgen in terms of saying, you know, I, I agreed with him obviously in terms of scrapping it, but he was saying you know it's the the people that are using it that the issue. But I don't see where we get people to use it from for next season who are better. Like where who's who are we calling on to do this? They don't. They're not going to offer me the opportunity to have a go, or you know, they're not going to have. It's it. Yeah. So uh, we, we. It is what it is at the moment. So it, it, it's going to be still flawed next season. Maybe flawed the, the season after, and, and maybe for the foreseeable future until you know the training around it improves. People get a bit more used to it. There's a bit. But I also think there's, there's just going to be mistakes forever in it as well because humans are using it and humans make errors. So you know, I think we've just got to slightly accept that, and I think. You know, all the people who are saying that, you know, the, the, the people who were loudest about refereeing decisions in the past, are the reason we ended up with VAR, and they're also now the loudest about being the ones who want to get rid of it. But I can assure you now that if they did get rid of it, the first terrible decision that gets made, all the crying would start again, all the nonsense around, you know, yeah. all the nonsense that got us into this position. So, you know, my take is that, is that these people, that, that select group of people who, who basically brought us VAR, are not mature enough to get rid of it now you know we can't we can't afford to get rid of it because they exist so you know it, you, you kind of reap what you sow and it's unfortunate the rest of us have to put up with it but as i say i think we are going to have to because i just don't see any chance that 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 resolution passes yeah it will be i'm the same it's like it's in now i i would like it scrapped as well for obvious reasons and what we see the pace just the enjoyment it takes out of a goal and the whole scenario but as soon as you scrap it, you are then at the same time giving that body to carte blanche to say, well, you wanted it out, no matter how bad the decision. And they'll be moaning either way. So I don't know what the answer is. I'm not going to pretend, but just get better with it somehow. But I think you're right. I don't see that becoming a, a quick fix. I think we're going to have similar discussions at times next season. So we'll have to see. So, yeah, we'll be interesting to watch that one. I mean, off the pitch, these these sections get longer and longer each week. And I mean... Like you say, the the announcements at the end of the game, but there's a there's a few big stories of bro. Linders and Matos, they're set to go into Red Bull Salzburg, aren't they? An interesting mix. Does it sound like because of the nature of that club, they'll have much same recruitment? But it's a it's not Pep Linder's first management job, it's his second, but a good club to step into, and especially to get Victor Matos on board with him. That's a good move at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a really good job. It's going into a club with a really defined structure um, that's been really well run in terms of how they've worked in recruitment and also with, you know, expectations are slightly lower than they might have been generally yeah. because they've just not won the league for the first time right. in 10 years as well. So there's there's a level of improvement that he can bring. He can, you know, everything else around the game is looked after, like I say, in terms of recruitment and the structure's really good. So he can just go in there and be a coach, which I think is really important. He's taking Matos with him, who knows, you know, they both know how each other work as well. So that's a, and I think it could be a really good fit for him. So yeah, I think it's a, a really sensible move to go there because it, it, there were links with Ajax when it, with, like in yeah. recent weeks. And I just think, or recent months rather than I think, you know, that's a club that's a little bit in shambles at the moment, but to go to somewhere where, Yes, there's that little bit of level of improvement that's available to him, but it's it, in general is an exceptionally well run club, and, and and a lot of things that he you know he won't have to think about because it's so well run and well structured, um, and as I say, just can go in and focus on the coach. And I think it's a really smart move to go there, and I'm really excited to see how he gets on. I think he'll do. I think he'll do really well. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. It was interesting. He got a brilliant send off as well, didn't he, Pep Linders? Especially there was real noise and real passion behind his send off. So yeah, he, he deserves it as well. By the way, because I think you know it, it almost kind of goes under the radar. I know Jurgen tries to speak about it a lot, but I don't think people sort of accept how big of an influence he's had on on modern Liverpool and the the, the you know I think all that that nonsense around the book and him being at fault for last season's collapse and all that nonsense. Um, just so far off it. I mean, if people knew the the, the sort of influence he had on putting together that title winning team that the absolute well the, the the Champions League and title winning team the tactical influence he had on that was absolutely profound and it, 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 it basically put that together that entire tactical framework and and and, and you know created that and, and and also you know 
implemented it in terms of how the training sessions were structured as well. So he was a huge, huge influence and a big change from Buvach before him as well. It was getting yeah. him back was an absolute masterstroke, and, and and he was he had a massive influence on Liverpool winning what they won. Um, and, and I think that kind of goes under the radar because people got it in the heads that he, he you know he was that he was a problem in the latter part of Jurgen Klopp's reign. Um, you know, nothing like it really he was a yeah a, a huge part of Liverpool's history, and he he, he deserves mass, massive credit for that. Yeah, we'll be interesting to see how he gets on a, a Red Bull Salzburg as well. And one story, I'll be honest, I didn't like reading this that you wrote, but there seems to be a few mentions of it. Alisson and Saudi links. This is not, I understand what people want to hear. I mean, do you think there is anything in this? Because people are naturally, is the, was the Saudi uh, situation a bubble almost from last season? Had it petered out? But from obviously reading that article, there might be something in this, might there? Yeah, there absolutely is. I mean, it's my understanding that there's sort of several clubs are interested in Alisson going into summer. I think not just Saudi Arabia, but some in Europe as well. But I think it's not, it's not, you know, it's the way it was put to me, it's not really anything to worry about at the moment. You know, source is close to the player saying he's he's really happy at Anfield. So not thinking about pushing for a move. And I mean, quite easy for them to say as well that, you know, the, Yes, that he's happy, but you know, he's yeah. maybe he's got a decision to make, or there's that you know, he wants some assurances going into there's nothing like that. It's you know, look, look the player's happy at Anfield, he's he's happy with the, the direction of travel. He's also he got a pay bump last season as well, so he's the third highest earner at the club. So Liverpool have got him contracted till 2027, so there's no worries about yeah. that either. So uh, Liverpool in a really good position to to fend off any interest. The player's not pushing for a move at all, so I don't think it's anything to worry about, to be honest. And I know. There's been some sort of rumour mongering around him for quite a while. For some reason, I'm not really sure what the source of all that is. But yeah, in terms of from club side and, and from the player's side, everything I'm being told is that he's happy to stay and, and that Liverpool fans should expect him to be Liverpool's starting goalkeeper for next season. So absolutely nothing to worry about around that one, even if there is a little bit of interest in him. Of course, there's interest in him because for me, he's the world's yeah. best goalkeeper, but it's, yeah. uh, I don't expect it to come to anything. Hey guys, it's Eddie Gibbs from Anfield Index here. I hope you're enjoying this podcast and I'm sorry to call time on the show before it ends. In the current climate, it's tougher than ever before to offer podcasts for free. At Anfield Index, we produce over 75 free shows every month, which I'm confident is unparalleled in the LFC sphere. Whilst we'd love to offer everything for free, the production costs now make this impossible. That said, we don't want to follow the model of other channels and lock all of our content behind a paywall. So what we've decided to do is to continue offering every show for free, but cut that offering to 30 minutes on our longer shows. So to get all of our shows in full and enjoy the best of everything we have to offer, we really hope you'll consider supporting the channel and signing up at AnfieldIndexPro.com. For about the price of one cup of coffee, you'll get every podcast in full with zero ads. You'll also get access to our LFC VIP community where you can enjoy live podcasts, engage with our podcasters, and chat with other Reds in real time. So that website again, anfieldindexpro.com. Join today. Sports Social Podcast Network.